Okay, so morning, Ricky Tang here. I'm just about to get onto the Suzuki Hayabusa. If you've been watching YouTube for the last couple of months, you've seen this bike doing the rounds. My turn. And it's not often I sit on a bike uh, with this sort of clip-on setup. Although you can see that the clip-ons are above the forks. It's not that extreme. Uh, the clock's an hour slow. I'm sure there's a way of sorting that out. Oh, look at that. So I was wondering just now, how the hell do you set the, well, get into the settings? You hold the bottom button there, get into your settings. Uh, display, riding set, RPM set. I better have a look, see if anyone's done anything silly there. No, don't look like it. I wonder what that is. Oh, it's the light. Oh, right, okay. I'll have a play with that, yeah. Why not? Um, hill hold set. On. Good. Uh, exit. Brightness is fine. Date and time, there you go. Let's uh, put it an hour forward. Now, this has got uh, easy start, I think it's called. So I'm just going to touch very quickly the start button and move my finger away. Nice. Starts all by itself, finding there's no problems. Okay, let's get out of here. <laughs> I'm riding a Suzuki Hayabusa. I know, you know, if you watch YouTube, you've seen this bike a lot. But I've never ridden a Hayabusa before. So, uh, very excited to uh, get on this and uh, see what it's like. So, unfortunately, I can't compare it to previous versions. Wow, I can barely reach the mirrors. <laughs> So you probably know all about the booster by now. It's been in so many videos, even this specific bike. And uh, it's been popular here at uh, Fraser's of Gloucester when it's uh, their turn to, to get hold of the bike. I think this is the third visit of this bike. Suzuki uh, built this as the ultimate sports bike. Well, I'm probably not qualified to tell you whether that's going to be true or not on the ride today. I'm taking this out as part of another one of uh, Fraser's demo days for this machine. So I haven't got it for long, just a couple hours. So this is just a quite a brief date. So I've got a, you know, a plan uh, for this bike. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take it on some of my you know, favourite roads. I'm going to start with an A road when I get there. It'll take a while to get to the A road. But then I'll go to a B road to see what it's like in a bit more tight and twisty and gnarly set of roads. And then I'll get on the motorway for uh, a couple of junctions to just see what the wind's like. This bike has an analog speedo. I don't know if I can get the speedo or the speed on the uh, TFT display. I get the feeling maybe not. So uh, yeah, analog clocks which do look nice. It's always sign of quality when you've got a lot of dials to look at. <laughs> uh, just trying to find out what the bike runs at if I just let the clutch out and let it tick over. A bit faster than the surrounding traffic, <laughs> it appears. Let the clutch out. It's over five, something like seven or eight miles an hour. The clutch lever, the clutch pull, well, this Suzuki has the, the slip and assist clutch. So part of that is designed to uh, reduce lever pressure. But I've got to be honest, that's taking a reasonable uh, grip to pull that lever in. It's not a light clutch. I've had heavier clutches though. But if you are a bit weak of uh, grip, in traffic like this, stop start traffic, that could prove to be a uh, cause of a bit of an ache in your hand. But other than that, I'm just, uh, where am I? nine miles an hour or so it's just a little bit of, a little bit of lash a little bit of jerkiness just here on a constant throttle but I am doing like 1400 rpm <laughs> we're just crawling along hopefully this has been the only bit today where I have to go slow just a little test sixth gear uh, about 1800 rpm I think it's under two grand for sure sixth gear what we got
little bit of vibration just as it started to pick up. Just before two and a half thousand RPM, uh, it was smoothing out. And I've one more quick go, no one behind me. We're rolling at about 1900 RPM, sixth gear, what we got? Whoa, calm it down. Whoa! <laughs> So yeah, it, I think it pulls well for about 2,000 RPM in sixth. That was one of my preconceived ideas. I hope there was torque everywhere. Pulls about first in any gear. That's really what I want from any bike, really. Or any big bike. It's going to be hard to... Uh, well, it's going to be impossible to really put this bike through its paces. <laughs> impossible. I might as well just get off and park it now. Because it is so fast so capable I'll tell you what that was easy so I've got some bends coming up let's have a few bends where are we fourth gear that picks up very quickly <laughs> uh, still only 20 minutes in so what I want to be able to do is, you know, open and close the throttle, accelerate, decelerate, and kind of find out where we are in the revs. Does it really pull amazingly everywhere? Or, there, or are there bits where it's a bit soft? Four thousand RPM, that felt strong. It does pull like a inline four cylinder bike i know that's stating the obvious but it builds power it's not uh, kind of grunty like my bmw uh, r1250 r that kind of leaps forward at 4000 rpm this more surges forward <laughs> it's a subtle difference but there is a difference so interestingly uh, i haven't worked out cruise control yet so I had pushed the cruise control button in on the on the right hand bar and I got the cruise control symbol but I haven't worked out how to engage it but the interesting thing is if I try and press the mode button while this cruise control symbol's on even with no throttle uh, nothing's lighting up nothing's switching uh, mode so I have to turn cruise off to be able to start switching between the modes might be something I'm doing wrong Whoa, <laughs> calm it down. You know when sometimes you set off from a, a standstill and your leg goes behind you? You just leave your leg out the back? Well, I did feel that my heel touched the exhaust. It's a big exhaust. So, uh, it's so big though, I don't imagine the back bit's very hot. So I don't imagine instant melting of my boots. <laughs> so while I'm here, um, now I am uh, 1 meter 70 or just uh, 5 foot 7, I'm not a giant among men. There's not a lot of weight on the wrist to be honest with you, unless I put it there myself. That doesn't feel too uncomfortable. The legs are tucked up relatively high. Reminds me of my uh, S1000R, that was quite high in the old foot peg department. But I think my BM was actually a bit higher. If I look down, if my leg was going straight down, I'd call that 90 degrees straight down, but probably another 25 degrees-ish past that. But would I want to do a lot of miles in this riding position? Yeah, I'm not so sure. <laughs> if I was a younger man, back in my R1 owning days, probably yes. Mirrors thus far, not much vibration, but I just haven't used many revs, so uh, I'll let you know later on. Golly gosh. <laughs> Road's pretty rubbish right here, and uh, suspension so far don't feel, doesn't feel too firm, actually. It does feel nicely damped. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh 
Okay. And that's the test concluded. It's a great bike. Thank you for uh, watching my video. See you in the next one. <laughs> not quite all you need to know. Okay. I've not gone around any bends yet. But damn. I know the road, but I just don't know exactly how fast this thing's going to accelerate at the higher revs. So I'm being a little bit cautious. Now, while the suspension feels well damped and handling the rubbish road, the bike otherwise does feel very rigid. Very much feels like one solid piece of engineering. Now, this bike has got hill hold, but from what I can see, it only actually holds you if it thinks you're on a hill upwards, pointing upwards. It will not hold you on level ground or fairly level ground. And it will not hold you if you break and stop on a descent. So if you hold, try and do hill hold on a descent, it doesn't work. It's not designed to, which I think is a bit crazy. We have got launch control. While the engine's running, you hold down the start button. We get 4,000 RPM. 6,000 RPM. <laughs> Anyone nearby? Uh, 8,000 RPM. Wow. <laughs> Wasn't a very convincing launch control start. There's a little bit of grip where, where I stopped the bike, but it was still fun. So we dispatch this vehicle. upset when you are quite hard on the throttle the front end staying pretty well planted and it's going where you're pointing it that's that was impressive it should be impressive shouldn't it at the end of the day <laughs> it should be bloody impressive luckily it is that suspension it's not uh, ele electronically uh, adjustable it's a KYB front and rear fully adjustable just not electronic but I am loving the feel and the quality of it I'll have a bit of that perhaps just a little sprinkle of that on naked bikes with higher handlebars and you know um, the super venture bikes with a lot of power because you're mu much more upright um, you start to accelerate and they want to pick up the front wheel quite quite early on depending on the amount of power they produce and where they produce it but with this riding position because you're leant forward it might be partly due with electronics but it just doesn't want to lift the front as you accelerate it keeps it pinned so there's a very serious uh, benefit to this riding position even if i probably couldn't live with it for very long <laughs> it has its benefits That sounds lovely, but he's not doing any speed, so it sounds a bit silly making that much noise and not going very quickly. But he must be enjoying himself though. However, I feel that I've enjoyed myself more. It's solid. Well, that was new. <laughs> I'm glad the camera's still there. So what's good about this bike? 
is uh, when you are going fast, you naturally want to get yourself down here. You're leaning forward, you're in a crouch, and the fairing, the screen, gets the wind right off your helmet. You're not being buffeted. As soon as you lift your head up, there's a lot of buffeting. But uh, when you're cracking on and you're forward, it's a very smooth experience. Those aerodynamics, the way it gets the wind off your crash helmet going fast is uh, uncanny. I'm not used to it. This bike is a laser guided missile. Or in my case, a loser guided missile. <laughs> um, hello? So this bike does have a steering damper somewhere nestled down in the front end. And with a 23 degree steering angle, uh, it's probably a good idea. What's this front end? Especially if you have lower wheelie control options or lift control option settings. The front end will be very lively. Oh, that, those brakes are uh, powerful at the front, Brembo Steinemers. The initial bite on these Steinemers, on this bike anyway, the initial bite is not very uh, powerful or bitey, but there's a lot of power there if you squeeze the lever. I think the 150 newton meters of torque comes at uh, 7,000, so that's really quite low for tall sitting in the bike. On a V-road like this, when you're on and off the throttle quite a lot, it might pay to put in a softer throttle mode. It does feel a little bit like it is turbocharged. It's so keen in the mid-range. Five and upwards. My forearms are aching a little bit. That's partly to do with the riding position, maybe. But it seems to need to take a bit of opposite lock. A bit of pushing on the bar to help get it over. Yeah, I feel, well, mind you, you've got to understand, and I do apologise, I'm not very good at leaning off a bike. That doesn't come very natural to me, so I'm not using much of my body weight or the pegs. But uh, as a result then, maybe of how I ride, I'm pushing on the bars a fair bit because it's low and it's long. And it's quite heavy. So, uh, so my arms are getting a bit of a workout. side stands easy to get hold of that's good um, just gonna clean my visors my lenses and uh, yeah I'm not gonna have the time to have a nice walk around of this bike unfortunately I've got to get it back my time is nearly up so for now this is kind of about as much as a look as you can get it looks pretty gorgeous I'd say I do like the chrome accents. I thought that was a pretty brave move when I first saw the press shots. But I like the chrome accents on the on the fairing and the burgundy accents. Let's have a little look at the headlights. Uh, full LED spread. You can see uh, you got the side lights here which turn off when you're indicating. A bit like modern cars nowadays. And surprisingly, this is another one of my preconceived ideas kind of blown out the water. I've not found it too uncomfortable for this riding position so far. It may be that my old R1 really ruined it for me because that was not a very nice riding position at all. Yes, it's uh, better than uh, I expected on the comfort stakes on this short ride. Right. Uh, let's put it into uh, power mode C. Comfort. Oh yeah, the throttle, the throttle response now is a lot longer to get the same sort of shove. I'm doing that because I'm a little bit nervous about the fuel range. 
I think the next fuel station is about uh, maybe five miles away. It still says 13 miles range, so we should be okay. Hi there. Look at that tugs. Look at that tuggy. That's a tuggy tug. Good voice. Would I prefer this to an H2SX? Well, I think the H2SX has a less uh, weight forward riding position, so I think I might prefer the SX riding position. And when that supercharger kicks in, you know, it, it, it bends space time, it's amazing. But, up to about 4,000 RPM, somewhere around there, um, before the supercharger really starts to make its presence felt, it's just a 1,000 cc inline four. And this engine is something like 33% bigger than that. So I prefer the low end torque of this bike, because it's got quite a bit of it. It's less like it beats you over the head with the power, more like it just slowly mushes a brick into your head while you just lie there helplessly. I'm still not uncomfortable. I'm, this is blowing my mind really that <laughs> I thought I'd be moaning about my back aching and my wrist aching and my neck. Uh, my hands haven't started going numb, so there is some tingling, but it hasn't really uh, got any worse through the through the handlebar not much through the pegs a little bit through the bodywork but but not a lot of uh, vibration I'm liking the clocks but I would like a bigger TFT I, I, I like my gadgets I'd rather have all the elements of the TFT bigger and easier to see on some cars I think it started with kind of golfs and Audis the dials were replaced with um, you know electronic dials same shape and size but just TFT displays we can get more information I think I might prefer that sort of layout I just want a bigger screen but you can't deny the the air of quality about this whole bike really so I was saying earlier that you know I couldn't have really envisaged doing a long distance trip on this bike well now I'm starting to think that I could can I sit up right? Just relaxing. Just a yeah, actually yeah. If you go back just to one hand on one, on the throttle, so yeah, it's just about possible to sit up for me. I better not start falling for this machine. <laughs> I, I I really don't need a higher booster in my life. I really don't. So is there anything that I don't like about this bike? Not really. <laughs> There's not much that stands out to me and goes, well, that looks a bit rubbish, or that feels a bit rubbish. Uh, perhaps, uh, going back to my preconceived ideas, just there, I'm at 2000 RPM, fourth gear. I want more. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Whatever. I'm, I, I want a bit more instant response there at, uh, you know, just between two and three. No, I can't really think of anything I, I dislike about this bike. I really, I really can't. I'm struggling. The quality of the glass in the mirrors leaves something to be desired. <laughs> it's, it's almost as if the glass is actually plastic glass. And uh, it's a little bit distorted on the edges of the mirror. I'd expect higher quality glass for the mirrors. So, the big question. Would I take the Suzuki GSX 1300 Hayabusa out on a second date. Second date? I'm already trying to find a wedding ring. I jest. I don't think I'll be buying one anytime soon, but uh, an amazing bike and absolutely yes, I would love another opportunity to uh, take it for a spin. So thanks for hanging out with me on this uh, first date. And I'll see you in another video soon. Take care.